hey, how's it going? Wait, can you even see my face? Here's some light. Um, so random vlog. I've been stuck inside this thing for the last few days. I don't think it's been a week yet, but the snow is finally melting. So I think I'll be able to run around finally and do some things. But anyways, um, here's what I've been up to the last few days and attempting not to go insane. Um, yeah, welcome to a random vlog. <laughs> Close. There we go. Hmm. I just had the distinct feeling that maybe I shouldn't get off of this lift. The snow seems to be a little bit deeper than I thought. Yeah, that's a good six, seven inches, maybe. Hmm. Uh, yep, that was a bad idea. It is very deep. It's a little deeper than I thought. I was gonna try and take out this garbage, but I don't think I can make it over there. Luckily, the snow is nice and fluffy, and I can just sweep it out of the way. Eh, that'll do. Well, there's your problem. That's how all the gravel's been getting into the lift. This thing's warm, and it sits on the snow and just picks up all the gravel. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so we're in the F3. It's uh, 22 degrees out here. You can see we've got a bunch of snow and ice and stuff. And uh, this thing actually seems to be doing pretty good. We do have the aggressive tread tires on here. They are getting fairly worn down, but uh, still getting traction just fine. It's another wintry day outside and we've got a little bit of snow out here. I really wanted to use this opportunity seeing as how there's ice and snow and I'm in a gravel lot that's on a slight hill. I wanted to test like my F3 versus the Stretto, the Edge 3 Stretto, to see how it does for traction and whatnot. I wanted to test the C300 here also, but it's kind of buried in this corner and a little bit hard to get out of there. I'm pretty sure that thing would not do well at all. It barely moves on just the gravel. So anyways, I set up the camera and I don't know if any of this is gonna be useful. You'll just have to rely on my thoughts, I guess, as to whether the chair is easy to control or whatnot. Now, granted, a lot of people think I absolutely hate quantum. I hate their reliability or lack thereof. The chairs themselves, I don't mind. I would love to like them. But anyways, take that out of the equation and here's some footage. Okay, hopefully this camera does not blow over. So, um, welcome to looking at the ground. Right now, what we're gonna do is a quick shootout between the 2021 F3 Permobile with the aggressive tread tires, albeit they're less than probably 40% tread right now, and the Quantum Edge 3 Stretto with stock tires in this snow, ice, gravel environment. Um, I was going to also try and test the Permobile C300, but it's buried in the bus in such a way that, um, well, I can't really get to it. So we got a little bit of loose snow, a lot of ice, and some gravel. I'm just going to run up and down this a little bit. There you can see my tires are spinning just a little bit. This chair does have the ESP gyro stabilization, um, and also somewhere in the programming it keeps the tires from spinning too excessively, I believe. So I'm just gonna run up and down here real quick. First off, we're gonna go high speed, which usually works a lot better for this sort of environment. As you can see, not too big of a deal there. Turning around here, I'm gonna cut back down here, stop, and let's just back straight up, stop again, turn to my right, not too much of an issue. Okay, tires are spinning there a little bit. Trying to go straight, didn't really want to do it. I don't know if I'm in frame anymore. Okay, let me get into a spot here. I think I should be kind of stuck. And now I'm just gonna hammer the throttle at full speed. 
tires were spinning quite a bit, but we took off going straight roughly. Took a little bit of input from my joystick. Okay, straight forward again at full speed. Okay, not too much of a problem. All right, uh, before I ruin all this snow, I'm gonna grab the Stretto. It's in the van here. Currently 28 degrees outside. Can't remember if I mentioned that or not. But um, let's see. Okay, the door's not frozen shut. That's a bonus. So that's gonna take me a minute to extract this thing out of here. <laughs> all right, will it turn on? Yeah, and the Stretto, by the way, has been in here. It was 19 degrees last night. Um, so the batteries are cold. I don't know if that is more fair or not fair or whatever with power, but um, we'll see how it does. Yeah, I had this thing stuffed in here and one feature of its narrow base is, oops, skidding. <laughs> um, one feature of its narrow base is, well, it's narrow. So it makes it easier to uh, fit it in small spaces. The seating's wider, so I had it lifted up. That way I could get around it in the van. Lower this back down here. Yeah, this, this Stretto does not seem to get much traction at all if there isn't any weight in it. I'm gonna check real quick and make sure this camera's still recording. Yeah, and I apologize for this camera angle, but you know, reasons. Okay, I'm gonna hop into this thing here real quick. So I've got this thing tuned up basically about the same that the F3 was. Let's see how it does here. Okay, now that we've got some weight in it, it seems to be getting traction. Whoa, it's really hard to go straight. Once again, this thing, well, this thing does not have gyro stabilization. So let's, yeah, I'm, I'm having to really modulate the joystick to keep going straight. But, you know, not having a gyro, that's kind of one of those things that, or kind of how it is. So let's stop right here again. And I'm gonna go full forward. Oh, under voltage. Yeah, our batteries are really, really cold. Let's try this again. Oh. So as far as traction goes, I mean, I can, I can tell I need to be careful, but we are getting traction, so that's something. Let's try the fluffy snow over here. All right, let's back straight up. Okay, that did all right. Let's go here on this more icy part, try it again. Oh, and we're spinning. I'll try and go towards the camera. Okay, hang on. Let's do another high speed run here and see how straight I can keep it. I'm gonna try and use all of my joystick operation skills to keep this going as straight as possible. So let's go down here and turn around. Okay, I'm gonna go around the lift and straight towards the camera. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I am getting the feeling that, you know, I have to be a lot more careful with this. Like if I went over here into this gravel and started maneuvering, this thing would definitely dig in. And that's kind of the nature of mid-wheel drive chairs because you have all of the, all of the extra casters. Actually, that, that didn't do too bad there. Huh. All right, let's try going downhill. I'm gonna get some speed over here. And here we go. I'm gonna try and go straight as I can around the lift. Okay, not too bad. Well, actually, I'm kind of surprised. We're getting a little more traction than I had planned on. Instead of going full throttle, I'm just gonna try and maneuver exactly where I wanna go at a fairly low speed. I'm turning left, I'm turning right. I'm gonna turn around now, straight again. I'm gonna go to my right and do a loop. Okay, that's fine. Let's stop here, back straight up to my right. Straight ahead towards the camera. Okay, so low speed, Seems to do all right. Huh, interesting. Um, 
This chair does like have like 50 something miles on it. The tires are basically new. Um, okay. You can see it, it takes a little bit of work, but it eventually turns. So I'm gonna hop back into the F3 and do a little bit more screwing around, I think. Wait, it is not warm out here. Oh, the camera blew over. How long has the camera been blown over? So try and load this thing back in here. The only problem with these edge chairs is they do not get traction when there's when there is not weight in them. So I'm gonna use my toes and kind of help push this thing up onto the ramp. Maybe. Uh. Now the tires are wet, but there's no ice anywhere on this ramp. This is just purely because they're wet. And yeah, see it's just sliding. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is frustrating. Into the van. Okay. Whew. It is cold. Okay, I gotta turn off this chair and go back inside. Let me shut this thing off. As you can see, the F3 doesn't have a problem getting up this. I think it's because of the tires or whatever, but traction control, I don't know. Okay, I'm frozen. Time to go inside. Oh yeah. I just, this F3, it just does exactly what I want it to. And I don't have to worry about driving technique. Um, yeah. Oh, cold. Okay, um, you can see we're covered in snow now and this is all gonna melt in this rubber floor and stuff. So I've just got a couple of towels that I throw down in here. And I'm just gonna park on these until my tires drip dry a little bit. Yeah, so the Stretto did pretty good, but like I said, it, it takes a little bit of driving technique. If you don't have to worry about what your chair is doing and get done whatever you're doing, like I'm gonna go out there and grab something and come back and not focus on how I drive my chair, the F3 is the way to go. The Stretto will do it, but in this very short limited test, um, you take a lot more time screwing around trying to get the chair to do what you want as opposed to getting done what you went outside to do, if that makes any sense. All right, so once again, because there's snow or was, uh, it likes to stick to the bottom of this lift. And once it goes in there into a heated area, the snow melts and the gravel drops off deep inside. Um, gotten a lot of it out of here but using a broom is definitely not the easiest way to do this need to make some sort of brush or something that's a little more flexible so I can get down in there when you try to put the broom in it gets stuck right here because you know metal and there's a bunch of gravel clear in the back although I've gotten a lot of it out of here now And there you can see this is all the gravel that is inside there. Um, yeah, not a lot of clearance. If you look real close, you can see the scratch marks there where it's uh, gotten dragged down in there. Can you guys see any more? Oh uh, yeah, see? Not a whole lot of clearance there. Um, So what I've been doing is running this thing in and out. I'm trying to get as much as I can reach. Oh, there's some. Oh, falling out of my chair. I think I need to devise some sort of flexible handle and a brush like this. Yeah, the problem is when this thing's out all the way, there isn't a way to get something down in here. That broom won't even really fit. 
Well, anyways, I think we're maybe done with snow for this year. I probably shouldn't be saying that out loud because the weather is spiteful. What I've been doing, I think I have a clip of it, is once I get inside, I get down on the floor and kind of reach underneath here and hit the bottom of this with a broom to get all that stuff off of there. We've gotten a lot of it out of here. I'm just gonna keep trying to run it in and out and hopefully it pulls more out. Oh, there's some more right there. You can see it kind of right down there. Well, anyways, this is my Saturday afternoon. Clean gravel out of a lift, because, you know, weather. By the way, quick update on our floor mods. We strengthened that up a number of months back in another video. That's been working really well. We added some angle iron in here, and I believe over there as well. I think there's another piece right there, yeah. I had to go through and tighten up all these bolts once, but I think everything's kind of compressed now and being fairly happy. That's an old blower I'm not using anymore, but um, yeah, I think our, our floor repair is getting the job done for now. I do, however, still need to build a brace for this bracket. I think you can see it here. See how the whole thing's tilted like that? This is our drive chain assembly here, and that's a clutch mechanism. But this is responsible for pulling this whole lift carriage in and out. And when it bangs against the end stops, which is how this model was designed, it puts a lot of load on that before the clutch releases. And we wind up getting this bracket here twisting a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is maybe get some angle or flat steel and tie it across here and attach it to over there somewhere. I think I might do a combination of angle iron and cut the end off so it's kind of pulling this way and then pick up a couple of those bolts over there. But yeah, this thing twisting, as you can see, see how that chain sagging? That affects the tension on that chain. And last thing I need is for that to skip a chain when trying to get in and out of here. But I've just been bending that back every couple of months with a giant crescent wrench and it seems to be working all right. But something that should be addressed at some point. And by the way, this is not a hydraulic leak right here. I lube everything up on this a couple times a month, including these edges here that have a little bit of rust going on. So that's just kind of dripping off from when I service it. And I haven't cleaned that up because I figure having some grease and oil all over everything protects from rust, even though we have a combination of aluminum and stainless steel. But anyways, um, yeah, not a leak. I suppose while I'm sitting here with my finger in my nose, I might as well fire up the air compressor and clean some of this dust off my chair. I think it's still connected. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Still can't believe how quiet those things are. I mean, listen to that. There's like basically no sound at all. And yeah, that is a Google speaker. I thought maybe if I had one in here, I could hear the music outside, but not really. Okay, the plan right now is to move this seating back a couple of inches. These little side pieces come off here. You gotta remove them from the back first. They have this little like eject logo. They are on there kind of tight. I already popped this one loose. And then you swing it out and kind of push the whole thing forward. Or maybe pull it back, oh yeah, pull it back. But as you can see, they've got these little hooks on here. And those interface with these little pins that stick out. I was able to shine a flashlight in on that side and see how it worked. But here you can see we have giant bolts. And as I suspected, we have some adjustment here. Now when this thing's down all the way, we've got about eh, probably three inches here, two and a half, eh, probably two and three quarter inches. I wanna move this back two inches. So all we gotta do is loosen up these bolts on each side and we can slide the thing back. And then I think that'll get us into the position we want. Okay, I have loosened up all four of these bolts on each side. I've pushed it back approximately this far. I lowered the seating down to make sure this actuator and everything is gonna clear the front cover. And it's almost like they designed it because the actuator fits right in here. So anyways, I've got it lined up with these two little pins here on each side. Unfortunately, this is not going to reattach on the front, but hey, I don't really care. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tighten these back down now and I think we should be set. Okay, I'm having a problem for some reason with the solar panels not outputting power. 
might have to do with the copious amounts of snow that are sitting on top of them. Uh, I went out there with the, with the grabber stick and tried to clear some of the snow off. Didn't get a whole lot, but then I remembered. I've got this uh, eight foot wooden dowel and I'm gonna zip tie the broom to the end of this. And I think we should be able to get enough snow off of there to actually make them do something. <laughs> we'll see. Well, we have this thing now. Um, zip ties and electrical tape. It's too long to even turn around in here, but I was getting 10 watts out of the entire solar array with four inches of snow on the top. So I think anything will help. I should be able to reach most of the panels with this. So we're gonna go out here and get on the lift and raise my seat elevator up all the way because safety and uh, see if we can clear a good portion of that snow. Oh man, it's cold out there. The temperature says 30 degrees, but the temperature sensor's in that bush and the sun's hitting it. But our giant broomstick thing here seems to have worked. We're up to 40 watts now on the panels. Um, and I've got as much as I can get off with this. So I think we are going to call that good. And I'm going to close the door because it is not warm. Amongst all the other things going on, while I've been sitting in this bus because the roads are snowy and wheelchair minivans don't like ice and stuff like that. I finally got around to another project down here with the electrical stuff. This is our DC um, distribution area for everything running off of the batteries. We have the 24 volt panel here that comes directly from the batteries we installed. And there's a 12 volt panel here. And this comes from a power converter made by Victron that's down below the floor there. And this is our inverter, close that. This is our inverter feed panel here. And this is an extra cord because I didn't put any outlets up there yet and plugging computers on that table. Well, anyways. So what I finally installed was these indicator lights here. I wanted to have some sort of visual indication of various functions, kind of like RVs have. And I bought the parts for this a long time ago. Just finally got around to installing them. I'm actually using one of these Z-Wave relay boards here, and it's kind of a waste of a whole relay board. These things can actually handle like mains power and uh, quite a bit of amperage and load. I realized after I bought that, that I could have just used like an ESP32 or 8266 and driven some LEDs with that. But I already purchased that, and I got these indicator LEDs here that were designed to run on 12 volts. They have a resistor built in. So we just put it all together since it was already in stock. I can't obviously just look at my phone or the computer and see what Home Assistant's doing because that's running all of this like smart home stuff here. And I, I, did, I did all the smart home stuff because it saves a lot of wiring and whatnot. But what I've settled on is we've got an indicator light here for when the freshwater tank gets below, I think 33 degrees, this will come on. It can actually be below freezing for probably 24, 48 hours without actually freezing because there's so much water down there. I think it got down to 29 or 28 last time I got cold here and it was fine. So that'll come on just to let me know what's going on down there. And then this here is for the power inverter. We do have another control panel for that right up there, but sometimes with the way I have some of the automations and stuff set up, that thing will kick on. Well, it'll disconnect the grid and the inverter will be on for no reason and I don't notice that green light. The green light signifies that the grid is currently feeding it and the transfer switch is closed. But I wanted to have another one here that I can see easily while I'm sitting up here at the computer or in bed. And this is just a nice bright light to tell me that. Plumbing heater, this just lets me know it's actually not on right now. It's a lot brighter when it's on. But this is our freeze prevention build heater thing. When that thing is cycled on, this light comes on and uh, just lets me know that it's working and stuff. And this here is the lift blower, which is currently on because yes, it snowed again. And yes, I lift the lift out again. Um, so this just reminds me that it's on. Because sometimes I'll turn it on in the rain and then I'll leave it on for like a week and just forget about it. So that just lets me know there. But anyways, um, got that all hooked up. I used a bunch of these insulated wiring clamps. They work really well for that. I'm kind of nuts when it comes to using these clamps. I've got them like everywhere. Um, this wiring's fairly neat. It is still a work in progress, so stuff is changing, but um, overall, that looks okay. I'm eventually probably gonna put a cover over this, 
but uh, for right now, I mean, I don't know, looks good enough. I still need to get some powered louvers or something. This is our outside ventilation, this forces air in. I just have this piece of wood over it to keep it from drafting, but I still need to get some powered louvers or something for that to open and close it. That just goes straight down into the inverter bay where we have a fresh air vent to the outside and the, uh, it's right next to the inverter and everything. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Battery charger. Uh, this is my grid, current my current grid feed circuit breaker setup. This is gonna be getting replaced with another panel like this, but that's gonna be down below. Um, just for now though, this big orange cable here is our feed coming up from the grid connection. And each one of these has its own circuit breaker and then the whole bar has a circuit breaker as well. So that's feeding some stuff or whatnot. Actually, no, that orange one's not our grid feed. That, well, it is kind of. So this comes in from the grid and this feeds into the inverter transfer switch. I have yet to actually label <laughs> all the fuses in here, but the nice thing about these fuse boxes is they have a ground pass through and your power obviously comes in. And there's a little light on each one. So if a fuse blows or something else happens, that light will come on. But as you can see, I've not bothered to label anything on here yet. Um, there's more 24 volt than 12 volt stuff. The way I see it is if I'm hooking up stuff that can run on 24 volts, I just opt for that. That way we're not using the power converter quite as much, which actually I think I've got a switch up here somewhere. Yeah, there's like a silver button down there that turns that converter on and off. But anyways, I've been a lot more motivated recently to kind of get some stuff done and I want to get running water in this bus. Um, next time I go to the warehouse, I'm going to be picking up the water heater. Thank you to the person that bought that, by the way. And I'm going to work on getting that installed in the plumbing bay down below. And then it's a little bit dark in here, but a wall is going to go up right here and some other stuff. Um, I think I can do this wall by myself because it needs to be in two four foot by four foot sections of plywood. Uh, the other two walls that are going back there around the shower are going to have to be four by eight sheets. Um, I'll have to get some help for that. But anyways, um, yeah, I think after today, the road should be cleared up. Should be good to drive around and stuff again. And uh, yeah, so anyhow, there you go. Video of random stuff over the last like few days or whatever. Um, I hope the snow is done with. <laughs> I said that a couple days ago and then it snowed again. So I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, uh, catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.